Before we begin, I need to let you know that it is very likely we'll not be able to continue making videos the way we have here on Shadowversity due to the severe, and I mean shocking, reduction in recommendations and uh, impressions our videos have been getting to our subscribers. We have gotten over 350,000 subscribers in the last two years, and barely any of them are getting recommended our current videos or our past content. It seems like Shadowversity has been put on the blacklist or is under the boot of the YouTube algorithm, and we very well might not be able to survive. Of course, it is only thanks to our supporters that we have been able to continue going forward, and so thank you very much to everyone who is supporting us, and if you would like to help us out, one to five dollars a month on Patreon, Subscribestar, Player, or channel memberships, helps out more than we can express. In addition to your possible help, I'm not giving up, I've also started a new channel called The Shadlands in the hopes that this new channel will not be as suppressed as Shadowversity currently is, and maybe this new channel can reach new audiences. It's called The Shadlands, and not only am I recutting old content that is not getting viewed or pushed to new audiences at all, this content is going back to basics, starting with some of the first subjects that I did here on The Shadowversity channel, but with a much higher production level and equipment. So if you want to catch that new content, as well as more consumable cuts of old content, subscribe to the Shadlands so you don't miss out. Greetings! I'm Shad! Who are you? We've got little title cards that tell us. Yeah, oh. that's his Nate, that's this guy, that's his Tyrant, that's that guy. Today we are looking at some stuff from Shogun, a brand new series about uh, Japan and samurai, and there's something that we want to put to the test a little bit. Well, f let me first say, uh, I'm up to episode four on Shogun and it is brilliant, genuinely great. Even does really well in the historical department. He even made me a bit jealous that we don't see such historically accurate medieval kind of period stuff. Feels like the Japan, Japanese, they demand respect. It's like, all right, if you do not make sure that, you know, you're doing this right, this right, they will cry bloody murder and good on them for doing it. We need some more outcry when our history is misrepresented. But anyway, great show, really enjoying it. Doesn't do the whole, you know, over romanticization and glorification of the samurai. It shows the samurai, the interesting parts, the irrespectable parts, the terrible parts. <laughs> like Japan, not the most, uh, PC place back in history. Let's just, wow. let's just say that. No place in history really was, but it's good to see it represented mm -hmm. in its true form, if that's yeah. what I haven't seen the show myself. So this is going to be interesting. So we're going to test some, well, 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 this isn't anything big for the most part. It's kind of just something that's a bit more of an interest, right? Yeah, a couple of- um, uh, It's one scene. Yeah, a couple of sword enthusiasts are, pointed this out, Metatron, in his review, uh, he's got, he's doing episode by episode reviews of Shogun, mm -hmm. check out those reviews from Metatron, they're great, so it's Anthony, Anthony Cummins, uh, he's done some reviews, and they both noticed an interesting thing, there is a, there's a moment in episode one, where a samurai decapitates a peasant, and it is one of those grey historical accuracy areas where not all samurai could kill indiscriminately, there were legal repercussions if a lower level samurai murdered someone without the right course. There would be a legal process to make sure if that was valid or not. If you're like a shogun or something really high, they could probably get away with it. So there were some questions about that, but also what he does, flat decapitation, one-handed. One-handed, and it also looks like it's a, a bit of a draw bit cut. Bit of a right? draw cut, yep. draw cut, one-handed, straight decapitation. And then he does something that I think is actually an inaccuracy. I think this has been adopted from the more pop, pop culture-y side of uh, Japanese martial arts. He, he cuts it and then he, f he does a, he does the sword flick. Also, you wouldn't want to sheath it after you've just cut some. That's the thing, yeah, because what we want to test then, we're going to test if we can, we have somewhat of an analog, but we're still going to try and see if we can cut through bone with a one-handed draw, <laughs> right? And then maybe I'll not even one-handed draw, just a regular cut, yeah. see if we can manage that. I'll get it, I'm good at the cuts, I'm the strong You're guy. Right? And then we're also going to test the blood flick. We're going to yeah. put some, uh, you know, uh, a blood substitute and a blood analog on the blade and see how much bl blood you can get off by trying to flick it. Yeah. Because in a lot of Japanese kind of katas and martial arts, a lot of the movements when they do the kata, they end with the flick and then they draw it. Right. So the issues, Sorry, like, the, the issues I have with a blood flick is a simple one. Mm -hmm. In full kit, in full gear, in a battle, not even in a battle, in a duel, why are you so 
Why is it so stylized to get the blood off? For example, if I pull out a sword, I cut someone, why am I trying to flick the blood off? I'll just, and then sheath my weapon. Mm -hmm. I, it's much less of a concern of getting blood on yourself than yeah. actually damaging your blade oh, yeah, yeah. by sheathing it with some sort of liquid that can cause it. Blood to has some corrosive element uh, things oh, in yeah. the in in you know like the salts and other things that you don't want to leave on a blade, and you ne you would never sheath it with blood on it. But the misconception is that the flick will do enough, and then you sheath it afterwards. We'll find out. We'll Let's find give out. it a go. Let's just try it. Let's do it. Alrighty. So what we have here is a pig's foot. It is somewhat difficult, problematic to simulate a human neck. Yes. Um, yes. So this little piggy went to market. Uh, but I mean, like, if we get through got... this, I would actually be a bit more impressed. This should actually be more difficult to get through than it. One, it's dead for a while, and living bone is actually a bit softer. Yep. Uh, two, and muscle, and yeah. muscle, living muscle is a bit softer. This mm. is a little dense because it's been yeah. chilled because we don't want wasps. And also, when you go through a neck, you have vertebrae and yep. you know, yeah. things like This is a, a bone. This The skin is tougher, yet at the same, on the other side, it's not as thick as a full neck. The full neck has more meat to get through. But it has multiple joints. So five mm. in total, because I believe there's a, a thumb mm -hmm. per se. Now, I, first up, I expect this to go flying when we hit it. Yeah. Which yeah. is actually kind of okay because a human isn't going to like... They're not going to have their body stand still while their head just They're goes... They're not going to oh, brace gonna... themselves and go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's go I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. the, the ease in which many TV shows and movies depict decapitations and bone limb chopping off is far too great. It's actually a lot harder to get through bone. Yeah. So much so, right, with a sword specifically, that... When there were certain um, uh, executions of important people, like which uh, was it, Anne Queen of Scots, the well, not but so, the Queen of Scots, when she was exec uh, executed, they made sure to get a swordsman from France who was expert at it come in to guarantee a decapitation swing in one hit. It takes a lot of training, a lot of expertise, and a very, very, very sharp sword. I believe that was an axe, though, wasn't it? No, he would use a sword. Mm, okay. Yeah, he used a sword. There we go. And so we're also going to do give ourselves a little bit more of a benefit here. We're not going to be using this particular katana here. This is a thousand dollar katana. It's folded. It's a beautiful blade. However, if I hit this on that, I'm going to break this. So we're going to be using this one here. Now this is what, well, like we said before, an katana Tachi. Spring it's steel katana. Now it is. It has a good functional edge on it. Yep. It's not shaving sharp. Most swords will lose that shaving sharp quality after a couple of draws or uses. Now, as you can see, it's a beast compared to a standard katana. Yes, this thing is a more battlefield oriented style katana. It has a much better chance. There's more weight in it, more power, more leverage. It has a much higher chance of getting through this. Uh, and that perhaps would balance out if uh, like compared to a razor sharp shorter yep. katana now it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one example analog okay we don't have a real neck but i think this setup is actually better than some people just do like pool noodles or tatami with wood in between yeah. and this is going to be harder to get through than that yes. um, and it may not stay secure as times were saying because <laughs> we've braced it down as best as we can without completely tying it down but in all honesty, if I grab that and just rip, yes. it's probably mm. going to come free. It is going to be harder for you to do a draw cut with this because it's longer. Oh, uh, you're not going to give it a go? I want you to have a go first. And the competition begins. <laughs> I will have a go first. And after he fails, I'll come in and use two hands. See? All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so we'll start with a draw cut. We'll start with a well, draw that cut. thing, it was a one-handed draw cut, yeah. which get him, that's four. Okay. That's going to be... Oh. Oh, you're stretching. <laughs> he doesn't stretch usually, and he's stretching. All right, let's give him all some right, room. Let's go. Dude! Ready? Are you guys ready for this? Oh! That's... that's pretty good. That, you almost got through Show it! Show me how much. Show me how much. Look at that. You know, they say that... Look at during... that. If you give it a bit of bend, it's basically through. It's... Is it... like, I could snap this off, I reckon. Yeah. Um, this is actually very instructive for a number of reasons. One, this, I said, was functionally sharp, and you can see that's impressive. Mm. If it was razor sharp, it would have got through, I reckon. Oh, was I... it was it the execution of seppuku? I think, or not seppuku specifically, but one of those execution styles where they left just a little bit of skin at the front. 
so the, the head would make a mess. So you you may have been more like, accurate than you think. That was an impressive cut there, right, Ty. So, for one-handed. So think of it like, yes, that's that's what I would have. First off, it's a backhanded strike for the most part. Yes. It's one-handed. This is also heavier and bigger than a standard katana. Mm -hmm. As we can see here, we'll get B-roll of all of this, but you can see what that the damage that it did to that yeah. blade. Which is... It damaged the blade! Duk, 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 duk. Yes, which is standard for something like this. Bone is, a relatively speaking, a hard material. Like, this is nearly all bone, and you cut through that much yes. of it. Now, uh, this has got fat all over it, because obviously that's pig leg. Mm. Now, if this was blood, as you saw, I was bringing it back, and that's when he sheaths it in the show, right? Mm. He does a little bit of shake and sheaths it. I don't want to sheath this because I want to take this stuff off, but this is the blade damage. I do think it would have went all the way through if it was braced a bit better. Yes, braced a bit better, yeah. Because you can see that from the angle, it's pushed itself out on yes. that one that one area. And that's so. just one of those things where holding mm. carcass parts is yeah. very difficult. <laughs> you, know, you know, like trying to balance out all the variables, that this is a bit of a beefier yep. sword, but one-handed, like, and the sharpness, I actually think this is proof of concept. This makes it plausible. Like, this is a chunky, thick bit of bone. You ready? Like, look at this. Look at this, all right? You nearly got through the whole thing. You would have, I reckon, if it was razor sharp, clean. And there's no bone left. Like, it's actually through all of the bone. Yeah. You know? I was a bit more dubious, but I, this is like, surprising me. This, this is, is also a bit of a colder bone than, yeah. like, say, human yeah. body temperature. It's a bit more It is, uh, it is. Cold. But also bear in mind, this is a modern spring steel sword and it got damaged on the edge from that. Yes. So the edge is an interesting one because obviously a more traditional <laughs> katana might be Thanks. a little bit... Thanks. For dinner, for dinner. <laughs> it might be a Dobby little bit... Dobby gets food tonight! A little bit softer, right? <laughs> on, on the edge. <laughs> These are the only scraps you get and you're like, <laughs> finally a meal! <laughs> we treat it better than that. Honestly. This here isn't like mm. your sword is throw your sword away. This is all fixable. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is all fine. You know, mm. this is no way. It's just once you do this a lot, yeah. then it starts to damage your edge. But should we get onto the blood shake or did you want to have a shot? I want a shot. Just a, just a now two-handed cut. So I have to rebrace this? Yes. <sighs> so, cut it in two. He cut the other side. He cut the other side. <laughs> so now it was a tricky cut actually because I needed to be really precise and because I was focusing on aim, I wasn't, you know, when you when you put in more power, your aim gets thrown off. So it's a balance, but okay. I I did see the way that went and look, it looks like Shad didn't cut as much. And in all honesty, there wasn't as much mm -hmm. to cut, but that's because there's no structure as well. Like in terms of cutting through gross. a that's that's gross, that's what that is. A bone. With one hand, do not touch me. <laughs> with one hand, yeah. Plausible. 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 If your technique's good, if you technique's have the right good, spot, and especially with something like a neck where you mm -hmm. have vertebrae and stuff like yep. that. And yeah. lots of meat. Like there is this much bone mm -hmm. yep. to that much meat compared to a, a, car, a foot or yeah. a hoof, well, which is almost as much bone as there is There's meat. the other thing that you can get lucky with a headshot and get in between the... Uh, is it the vertebrae? Yeah, the vertebrae. Right, the back of the... right in between. And then that's a much easier to get through because then you're dealing more cartilage than bone at that point. And then there's something to mention about like katanas in general in terms of their blade mm. geometry. They, they are... They, 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 those they are one of the features. It's the funny. Wedge. Everyone praises the wrong things with a katana. I have a video responding to Veritasium just recently here on Shadowversity because it's praising things that are just blown out of proportion or flat out incorrect. And the actual virtues of a katana, or a katana in this case, right, really ever get mentioned. Mm. Like it's the geometry of the blade, the handle construction uh, th that really make the katana shine when it comes to cutting. But you know that's why that's why we all know you watch Shadowversity for all of this good, good <laughs> chunky info on things like the katana. All right, so we've cut the neck, we've cut the head off. So now it's time for the yeah. next part. The yeah. flick, the blood shake. No, I the mean, next, the next part is me cleaning my. Hands. I would like this one. I don't know how we could test it. I would love to test how much blood actually gets on a blade when I you know. chop off a limb. I know, but it's not like we can just go and chop the hands off. You know, so we're kind of stuck with this. No right. volunteers? Yeah. Donations for science? No. <laughs> yeah, Nate can't do that one. Anyways. Gross. All right, so Gross. we've got some blood here, at least a blood analogy mm -hmm. right here, which we will can pour onto the blade and then yep. just we can just see say, how easy it is to get it off. We don't even have to call it a blood analogy. It's stage blood. It yeah. looks like and it acts like blood. It's mm. just plastic. It's synthetic. All right, let's do it. First? Yes, I want to go first. Can I clean that sword at least first? You, well, we're going to use the katana for this one. Oh. It'll be easier to flick. All righty. So with this one, we are using 
the $1,000 folded steel katana. And interesting enough, we have on our way a, like, so even though this is folded steel, it has a higher grade core and it's not 100% traditional, it's just closer. It's just the smell, uh, the forging method is more traditional, more but traditional. the steels themselves mm. are not. We have a vast, like, this one is valued at 3,000 on its way for us to review and test, and it is everything traditional. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. So we'll see what happens when that happens. Yeah. yeah. But with this one, I feel like the blood is just going to come straight off from the flick, and you know why? Why? Because it doesn't have a blood groove to hold it. He's pointing a sharp sword at me. I'm going to step back now. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, well, all right, so before we put the blood on, let's mm -hmm. just go over a couple of different things. Because there's different techniques. The one in the show is very simple. If you stand back very quickly. Hey, hang on, you're going to flick it towards me. Let me move. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you stay there. He's just going to yeah. flick it. Let's everyone move. So the first one, he draws it out, cuts, and then it's basically a simple flick. Mm -hmm. that... yeah, they flick and then they do the whole, you know, and then drawing. They bring it back in, right? Sheathing thing. There are other methods that I am aware of. I want to. Oh, there. Yes. Yes. I want to give that one a go as well. Okay. It's something very similar to they spin the blade around, hit it, and then they bring it back to mm -hmm. draw it. Let me say this over ceremonialized method of sheathing, very unlikely that the samurai of this period would have done that as a standard amongst them all as this regular. That's something that has crept in through martial arts tradition, flamboyantness. Well, the, way, the reason why I would agree with that is simply because practicality. Mm -hmm. You're not, even if we get most of the blood off, yeah. we're not gonna get all the blood off. Mm -hmm. And once you put that blade back in here, that now is gonna go on. into the sayer yeah. and that will affect your blade, period. Yeah, a lot of samurai actually of the medieval period samurai, right? They were soldiers and practicality and functionality just was vastly, exactly, they just wipe it off. And then if they wanted to sheath their sword, the whole, it's funny that the, 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 yeah, the that. ceremonial way where they, that, yeah. that one, where you draw it down, I guarantee there'd be a lot of samurai just like, yeah, draw my sword there, it's back in, I'm good to go. I disagree with you. Maybe not samurai, what, you're but there oh, really? a lot of- Well, yeah, pass, pass, pass me the sword, yeah. When you draw a sword, once you've used it enough, it is actually easier just to, to do that, it's quicker and easier than going. It's one of those things where it gets becomes muscle memory. I doubt that it became a traditional standard in the earlier period of the samurai where all of them were doing it. Probably, I mean, mm. um, we can never say that 100% of people do it, mm -hmm. but I definitely think that that is more of a, not just tradition, it's actually just easier to pinch the blade and bring it in. It is a lot easier. There's a practical method to it. Mm. But you know, you can't just sheath it. But anyway, we're, one, one we're, I don't have to look. we're here to discuss <laughs> the blood flick. Now this is outside my wheelhouse of the normal medieval things that I know. So this is going to be interesting to watch. So, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Let's start with, if only this portion of the blade passed through, you know, the head or enemy. All right. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's, uh, so the thing is though, there's a lot of motions, right? So, so I just cut, yeah. right? And then they bring it up and it's just flick. That made it worse. That made it much worse. Oh wow, that just spread the blood <laughs> down the blade. It did, yes. Hang on, let me try and do just a really wide flick. Ready? Ready? Again. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I like, Okay, first thing, this looks freaking awesome. It does look <laughs> How good. wicked does that look? I mean, it looks, it does look good. Look at that blood on the blade. It's still like you just been hacking and hacking up. Fake blood. Bad guys. Fake blood on the blade. And you're just walking around and it's like, and then imagine you're facing off and there's just that, like that looks wicked. Now, I would never put a sword in no, a sheath or no. or anything with this. I would always, Wipe that off first. That came off pretty easily, kind of. There's some, yeah, yeah, yeah. still a bit well, of But it is polished steel. I'm about steel. to reset. Yeah. yeah, it is polished steel as well. So right. it will come off fairly easily. Now, Tyrant is going to do it and do it much more stylized and accurate because he's more of a weeb than us. And so well, he just knows the motions. More. I'm just going to put a little bit more power into my flick. So maybe that'll work. I'm going to get a little bit more distance. Like yeah, we better yeah get. To, get, to get out of the splash zone. We've cut. We then come over. And then I'm ready to resheath. This is the thing, right? I'm actually a little surprised because when we were putting the blood on it, it looked like it was beading on the yes. blade. Like I thought, oh, this is going to flick. Like, look how much it, 
that looked like it'll just slide off. But that's just general water tension. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Or but, but no, th th then when you try and flick it, it starts, smears stick smears to out. the blade. And then you get really cool looking patterns. Yeah. That smudges uh, uh, but and less. Look at this. Look at this. This is a hellscape. This is like, look at how vicious this blade is now. So we'll reset again. automatic like mm. sword wipers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but. So I'm not an expert at this, but it goes a little something. I'll stand on this side. It goes a little something like flick down and that. It did nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I flick harder, right? I saw it smear around a little bit, but. All right, give it, give it a bit of a whack on the back of the blade. Here? Yeah. So flick it around. It's doing nothing. Nothing. Nah. Nah. And you got to remember, like, when we're putting the, the blood onto the sword, it's staying in little nice pooled areas where we put it. In reality, when you're going to cut through something, that's how it's going to come out of yeah. the, the target. Because so you're going to go from smudge to even more smudge. We'll think of it like this. A flick is basically a strike at the same time. Yeah, so except you also have the tension of the, the object yeah. pushing and... You know, I'm starting to realize that I sh maybe should have expected this because though I haven't had any... Had you exp didn't expect this? Well, the beading thought made it feel like it might bead completely off. No. But now, as I think back, I haven't had experience with blood on blade, but I have experienced water on blade. So when we cut water bottles yeah. and stuff like that, mm. The, but we like, still need to wipe those we always, Exactly, there's always moisture and little droplet smears left on the blade. They never flick clean. Yes. And that's water, and water has a lower, what, viscosity? Is Vis viscosity. Viscosity it's, than blood. It's not as thick, it's more runny. Yeah. yeah, and so water should have a higher chance of flicking off, and that doesn't, so blood wouldn't it either. I have one last thing we can try. Okay. Oil the blade. All right, we have oiled this baby up. It is... Greasy. Yeah, so I uh, left my beeswax in my other pants. So it is just oil. Lots of oil. Though. Lots of oil. All right, let's find out. Okay. All right, let's. If you go on this side, because yep. I'm, I'm flicking in that yep. direction. Yep. You know what? Here. No, no, yeah. you do. Oh, you do. Oh. I trust you. I trust. You. So do down, you? down here, around okay. that, that range, you, you not too much. You trust me. This yeah, is I a, believe you can do it. This is a this is a horrible. It's not that hard, mate. Come I on. mean, <laughs> I'm trying to be careful to not. There we go. A little bit there. You wasted so much. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ah! All right. Blood on oil blade. It looks to be beading pretty good. Let's uh, let's do the flick. Hmm. How'd we go? I think it did a little better. Well, like, I think it did, it did way do a little better. better. It's not smearing. It's uh, they're dripping in the beading. Beads. You know what? I want to I want to give another shot. Well, well, let, let's see if I can get any more off with a couple more flicks. All right. All right. So I'm gonna and then actually kind of. I mean, it's not, it's not all coming off. All right. Uh, maybe, maybe the idea behind this wasn't to get all the blood off, but it was to get most of the blood off. So when you, you know, wiped it on yourself, you didn't wipe everything on yourself. Which is fair. You know, I would have my sword oiled most of the time, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't put this back in the sailor. Like I mean, this, this no. is a couple of things. This has excessive amounts of oil on it. Yes. Most swords, even when they're oiled, well, like what we started with, like we keep our swords oiled and well maintained, and it looks dry, mm. but it has that sheen of dry oil that kind of is there protecting you. The only time I will put this much oil on a blade is when I'm going to put it away for months. Mm. Yeah. That's the only time I will put that much oil, and that's because I'm being specifically excessive because I know it's going to evaporate. Well, mm -hmm. there's also a bit of a caveat there when it comes to like a sayer, right? It's made out of wood, and it does absorb a lot of those oils away from the blade over periods mm. of time. All right, do you want to go? Oh, I feel like I'm go. holding this, like I'm presenting the small vial of blood. Yeah, bring me, bring me the sword. I have to present it with a small mm. vial of blood. All right, so we'll bring it back. And then, I feel like, because I had so much on there, mine was worse than yours. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Lots of beading. Wow. Yeah. 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 But it's now staying yeah. beading rather than- I just than... realized I'm doing it here, here. I've, I've been doing it differently. Go, go, I want to quickly do it the whole... He's, he's been doing it incorrectly. <laughs> Ready? There you go. That's better. <laughs> Made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's one more, one final thing I want to do, oh, and that's just the more... Spin bang. We'll do the spin. Yeah. So we'll clean this off, put a little bit of oil on it, because we've already got all this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll... Uh, one last time. I'll help. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing to note is that cleaning the blade that time was so much easier than usual that wiped off very very easy all right let's try a bit more a bit more spin this time mm. 
Really? I, mean, I thought that looked, that looked worse. No, 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 no. Uh, so what's that saying? What's that saying? At, at the Shad spinning mind. Okay, yeah. okay. But what's that saying at Shadowversity? Like, if it's better than nothing, I'll do it again. It's still useless. All right, last little bit of blood. We'll put this a little bit down the blade, just like that. Nate wasn't convinced, so no. we'll do it again. That looks cool, though. It looks it cool. Looks that looks cool. Uh, the tap does nothing. Yeah. It's just trying the spin work technique. Let me let me try and. I like it how you did a full 360 each time. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. 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 But all right, this is my I blade mean, now. We've gotten it to this point. Uh, does it just be a well-oiled blade? Look how going easily this cleans. We'll use a clean spot. If there's one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that came out very nice. Yeah. But does it just beat getting a rag and. Well, you Debbie Downer today. No. I'm trying, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to enjoy video. myself here. <laughs> and then once it's cleaned, it's mostly oiled, it's good to go back in the Take, sheet. Taking a while there, Shad. I think. I, <laughs> do you reckon? Bring it all over the back and forth. Right? I yep. grab the Okatana, let's test. Uh, right, Everything let's is a competition. Everything is a competition. Actually, no. We need a you all right. Exclusive content. Okay. So if you want to see which sheathing method is faster, the traditional and then in versus just looking, putting it in, become a supporter and like you can do that through channel memberships, Patreon, Utrian, no no, you should player or subscribe star, uh, you'll get access to this exclusive bit of content as we test that, available to our supporters. Thank you to everyone who's supporting us. And then you get access to this exclusive content. So just before we move on to yeah. like the main video, just double checking, the exclusive content is going to be you guys racing to see who can she the sword faster. Casually, we're not gonna go overboard. Yeah, yeah. and I'll, leave, I'll, I'll leave see it. you over. I will exclusive. use this one, which is even longer and bigger, and I will still win. You reckon? Yeah. I don't know. I reckon I will. Oh, I can't sheet this because it's still got the stuff on it, but yeah. yes. <laughs> so, all right, become a member. You'll get to check that out, exclusive content. And in the meantime, if you want to learn more about the Katana and some of the misconceptions, you can check out my reply to Veritasium right here. Hope to see you there. Thank you to everyone who's supporting us. You genuinely, like literally, it's thanks to you we're able to keep the lights on here. And so if every bit helps, one to $5 a month and uh, check out that video, you'll enjoy. Where's the med kit?